Differential Threaded Adjuster Setup. The first step will be to measure the drive pinion bearing preload. Rotate the pinion several times, then make your measurement. You want to mark this measurement down for future reference. Then go ahead and clean the adjuster saddles. Use a wire brush to clean the threads for the adjusters. Also, I'll clean the adjusters too. And clean the bearing caps. Use a little penetrating oil or thin oil to lubricate the threads and the bearing saddles. Check to see if the adjusters thread smoothly into the case. Then lubricate the case bearings with differential oil. Lubricate the bearing race and flip it over and do the other side. Now put the case into the housing. Check to see that it moves properly back and forth and install the ring gear side adjuster. Snug it up. Check the other side. Notice the bearing cap was not properly seated. Push it up squarely and install the threaded adjuster. Now manipulate the adjuster to get the proper backlash. Here we can check to see if the bearings are seated. Give the ring gear a good spin. That will make sure the races are seated properly. And check for backlash. This is pretty excessive. The ring gear must move over to the left. That will take up the backlash. So I'll loosen the non-ring gear side adjuster and tighten the ring gear side adjuster. This will push the case over. That will reduce my backlash. Now here we can see that the bearing races are up against the bearings properly. Rotating it will make sure it's seated properly. By doing it by hand, we can make sure that everything is seated without over tightening. Now check for proper backlash. We're looking for something around two to three thousandths of backlash here. Usually a few thousandths smaller than the small specification. Here you'll see I have approximately two thousandths backlash. Now I'll go ahead and check in several different locations to make sure that it's equal or very close to the same. Then go ahead and install the bearing caps. Here's a technique for you. Hold the bearing cap up while you start the bolts. The bolts will act as guides to make sure that the bearing cap slides down squarely onto the adjuster. This will keep the adjuster from being cross-threaded onto the bearing cap. Once the bearing caps are in place, let's go ahead and torque the nuts down. Torque them down to specification. Then back them off. The next step is to bring the bolts down to finger tight and then snug them just a little bit past finger tight. That will hold everything in place. Now we want to seat the bearings and spread the case just slightly to make sure there's a little bit of preload. Set the dial indicator up onto the bearing cap and turn the adjuster on the non-ring gear side. We're going to tighten this just a little bit until the dial indicator moves approximately one thousandths of an inch. This will ensure a slight preload on the bearings 
and a slight amount of K spread. This is our initial starting position. Then go over to the non-ring gear side. Locate the spanner nut hole and find a location onto the bearing cap. Usually we move the bearing adjuster one to two to maybe two and a half adjuster nut holes. This will set the proper case bearing preload and it will also push the case back and increase our backlash back into specification. Take a note at where you're at and turn the adjuster to the tightening position. This should be relatively difficult to do. Now get the dial indicator out and recheck your backlash. You should be much closer to specifications. Here we now have nine thousandths of an inch in this location. Now our specifications for this differential are 8 to 12 thousandths. This location has 10 thousandths backlash. And the next location has 9 thousandths. So we're in specifications and we're very good. Now go back and check your pinion and case turning force. Mark this value down. Here I'm freeing up the differential before making my measurement. And here I'll use the blue arrow to help me read my value. Compare the pinion and case turning force to the pinion bearing preload. Use the gear ratio to calculate the case bearing preload. If backlash or case bearing preload is out of specifications, you will need to manipulate the adjusters. Tightening or loosening both adjusters equally will change the case bearing preload without affecting the backlash. Loosening one adjuster while tightening the other adjuster the same amount will change the backlash without affecting the case bearing preload.